It's week two of the professional MasterChef semi-finals. So far, Sven, Brian, and Jamie have made it through. Well done. Thank you. Only two more pairs remain. Today, the next two chefs fighting to stay in the competition a 24-year-old sous chef Danny from Newcastle and Jonathan, a 30-year-old chef de partie from London. They will be sent to work in one of the country's most inspirational kitchens. I will see from them dedication if they really wanted to learn and do this out for fun. Before cooking off against each other for a place in the final week. I didn't imagine seriously that I would make it this far. Actually being here, I'm like, now the final's next. I would like to think that I could go out and win it. It's a big day, got a lot like, of other stops, really. This is a head-to-head. -head. Monaco is for a place in finals week. This is massive. I want the most outstanding plates of food that these two chefs have cooked in the competition so far. It's early morning, and Danny and Jonathan are on their way towards the heart of the capital. We're heading into central London. I don't really, I don't really have a clue where I am, though. There is plenty of fine dining restaurants. There's too many to pick from, really, to uh, try and figure out where we are going. They're about to cook in the two Michelin-starred kitchen of Hibiscus, alongside chef Claude Bosey. I started cooking, I was uh, 15. And that was a long time ago. Well, my parents used to have a restaurant in France. Sent to train in the famous Lyon de Lyon brasserie in central France, Claude went on to cook with some of the country's culinary legends. I mean, I worked for Alain Passard, a genius in my eyes. I worked for Alain Ducasse. Another genius where the different style, these people are a big influence to us. And they can do it, why can't we? You know, it's just a question of work and dedication. But at 26, Claude decided to move to England. I was working in Paris. I just needed a break. It was a small town in Ladlow in Shropshire and gave me the opportunity. It was whilst working at the Overton Grange that he began to make a name for himself. We got a star, and eight months later, I was a head chef. Ten years later, he had his own two michelin star restaurant in Ludlow, and a reputation for experimenting with the classics. I was in Ludlow for nearly ten years, and the idea to come to London was, let's try to do it somewhere else. We opened the restaurant in 2007. I mean, we got two stars now. My style is got French foundation, of course, because that's where I come from. You have to understand your classic before you can do modern, but we try to mix both of them if we can. I don't like cutting corner. I like things done properly. I'm not the easiest one to work with. I mean, I don't want to work for myself. Every chef in London's heard of hibiscus, heard of Claude. I can only expect he's going to want us to be awesome and hopefully match his very high standards. I'm familiar with Claude. I know his food, I know his style. And I know his standards are very, very high. Morning, chef. Morning. Morning, morning. Welcome. Chef. Welcome to Hibiscus. So we are going to do two dishes today from the lunch menu. One hot, one cold starter. You are going to do the cold starter, crab dish. Crab always popular on the menu. And you are going to do the fish dish. Lots of timing on that plate. The main thing is I want you to be happy with the food you're selling and feel yourself, who will I pay for this? And if you put that in your head, everything will be fine. Okay, guys, let's get ready for lunch, okay? I'll show you some dishes, let's go now. Come on. It's starting going into somebody else's kitchen, but I've eaten in a few Michelin star places. I obviously know the standard that's expected and what should be produced. 
Something like a biscuit, so I'd love to work in just to gain the experience and all the know-how. This will be a great learning curve to them. Jonathan will be responsible for the Devonshire crab starter. Layers of crab bisque, crab bavoir, and white crab meat. Topped with a melon jelly and finished with sea herbs, fresh almond slices, and a pickled melon sorbet. The way I see my cuisine is quite simple, but if you eat crab, you have to test it. You have to make sure the flavor are very intense and the balance is very intense. That dish where it's very important is the balance on the plate. If you get too much melon, boom, we lost the crab, okay? It's very simple, but you get used to it. We put some uh, bisque in the bottom of the dish. This is the babwas. So the hardest part on that dish is to make sure the balance is right. Okay, don't be shy. Sometimes you put a bit more, and you want to make sure each one, when they are together, we can still test them. Very, very important. Crab. Now the jelly. We don't want a lot of it. It's just a seasoning. It's quite intense. Isn't yeah, it? it's very intense. The balance is very important. We got some uh, almond. This will give you some texture. And these are all the little herbs we got from where the crab come from. I don't put herbs on the plate just for the sake of it. Yeah. Everything has got a job. Before the service, I want you to test all the herbs you're going to put. That will give you an idea of the balance. Test this. You see how strong it is? Yeah. Don't you don't want to put too many of them. Not willing to risk his two-star reputation, Claude will check each of Jonathan's plates in service, quinelling the melon sorbet and drizzling the olive oil himself. OK, that's it. It's working. Look, now you taste the dish, you understand how important the balance is. As you expect, the jelly will melt quite quickly. Yeah. Not too much fiddling with it, straight on the plate, in, I put the sorbet, and you go. Keep focus on the flavor, keep focus on the balance, and it will be fine. Working. That's the way you should play things, it's about the feel of the dish. No money tastes like, I think I'll be able to meet the standards. Just have to see it. Can't wait for service now, it's the exciting bit. Danny will be charged with making the cod with Morteau sausages and Giroles. Pan-fried cod with a cod skin crust, a thin potato gnocchi, topped with a Morteau sausage and Giroles. Finished with an onion and lime dumpling. Giroles, ketchup, and a white mead sauce. That fish course is very popular. It's one of our signature dishes who come every year. We've got all these little different elements or have to be timed together to come on the plate together. I will expect for lunch, we're full for lunch today. Like I will expect for lunch to be a popular dish. Claude starts by browning the traditional smoked sausages from the Morteau region of France. Just want to diffuse the flavor in a butter. To this, he adds chopped Girol mushrooms. We put some of the Girol juice. Next, he fries the rectangle of potato gnocchi. This is the gnocchi. The gnocchi get caramelized. The butter has to be hot enough to make sure it's not soaking the butter. Yeah. If not, we get something very greasy. See the caramelization how it's coming? You see the crust? That's going to be crunchy, and it's going to be moist in the middle. This crust will help us to put the girol on top of it and make sure it's not getting soggy. Then, he creates a dumpling out of a spring onion and lime puree. It's really sharp. What I want you to do is just dip it in. The cod will be cooked separately on the fish section, and Danny will be expected to bring all the elements together. You and Darren work together on that dish, are working on timing. This dish is what it's about. We've got the dumpling is nearly ready. You take it off. We trim the excess. Okay. We've got some mushroom ketchup. Yeah. This is wood sole, and everything on the plate is there for something. It's got a job. 
nothing is there just to say, oh, it looks nice. It will be good here. This is hazelnut oil. We are using a sauce which is made with mead. Mead is an alcohol made with honey. Allez, go for it. You see how important the balance is? Yeah. And you test everything. You test the mortar sausage. That on its own is very, oh. like, really strong. Oh, yeah, it is. But with the rest of it, that's it. it's like a light flavor. Every ingredient on the plate, even the little wood sorrel who's got a bit of lemony and a bit of bitterness, we just yeah. go with everything. Timing, very important. Make sure when we work on the time, we try to keep to it. I mean, you can get five, 10 seconds behind, but not too long because the service can go down very quickly. But I don't want you to stress about it. I want you just to feel relaxed and natural. Right, let's do it. It's doable. It's definitely doable. As Claude says, just keep calm. Do your job, and it'll be fine. Uh, that's the plan. Let's uh, just stick to that plan. Jonathan's got a dish where he needs to come out quickly because he has to be done in a minute. The balance has to be bang on. Danny on a different level is more about timing where he's going to work on the stove. He's going to dress the dishes with me today. And this is a uh, fucking important task. You know, I'm anxious every service. Today, maybe a bit more than normal. They've only been working with me for a day and asking them to do a job where some people will take maybe a year or a year and a half to do. There's a lot in the time as well. There is in every kitchen. So we just have to work as a team together to get the food out at the same time. Yeah, this is the most exciting part, waiting for the first chefs to come in. The first time I do it, first two times, then I'll be just finding my way, but as soon as I've nailed it, then yeah, sell 50 of them, it's fine. Some house, five covers, five crab. One cod, one pork, three chicken. Oui. Five crab. Yeah, oui. start dressing Let's go. jelly. It's enough. Stop. Show me your hand. Why are you shaking? Just sit there. No, don't think about it. Be natural. I want yeah. you to be natural. Just feel like if you was doing it where you're working, do the same. Just feel relaxed about it. Jonathan's challenge is to quickly and consistently achieve the perfect balance of this dish without it spoiling in the heat of the kitchen. Nice and light, perfect, perfect, is enough. I will have three minutes to pass for the five crab. Have you tested your herbs? Yeah, yeah. She was a member, yeah, remember the flavor. Leave me some space in the middle because I'm putting the, okay, wait. the sorbet. Yeah, ready? Very good. All the Next, keep going like this. Yeah. Good job. You need to take the speed. It's normal on the first time. But overall, nice and tidy. It's just the first one. Let's see the rest of the service going. Then you go in front of one cut. Three minutes. Wait. That three minutes gives you the time to get the dish ready. Careful the caramelization, feed the butter. Remember, I'll show you. Feed the butter. You do not put up, 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 up. Not when it's fat. When you need to be hot. When the bubble of the butter starts going, you put it out. Now. Yeah. Listen. You cook every day. I know you can cook. Just relax. Feel natural. Don't panic. Don't cut corners. Just take your time. Relax. Feel natural. It has to be natural. Okay? Allez, let's go back. That's it. Give him some life. A bit hotter because it's getting soggy. Danny, you need to move on with this. It's a 50 second to pass. Good shot. Come on, go pass. Yes. Allez, that's fine. Yeah. 
it's good. It's good. Nice to get started and crack on, yeah. If Chef sent them, then he's happy, so I'm happy. You got two minutes for your crab. Stop shaking. I like it. Careful. Here is not enough. This is not enough. This is not enough. A bit more. Just think about the test. That's all you need to think about. Don't work too much the jelly, Jonathan, because you're going to melt it and we're going to have to start again. Leave it like this. It's natural. You put it with the piping bag, just go for it. Because it's going to melt and I'm going to have to fill this plate in a bit. Forty-five seconds of pass for one crab on velouté, please. Oui. This is too big. Just break it down a bit. Find yourself eating a big piece of it. That's it. Bang. The balance of the plate is gone. Make sure you get it. Bits and bobs. Did you start to realize the kitchen is getting hot? Yeah. And uh, things melting faster. Or do you need to push on speed? But yeah, it's going. Yes. It's going to it. Look, look at his face. Look how focused he is. That's what we want. It'll be fine. Just need to keep the speed. With service now in full swing, the orders are piling up. Now I've got a big amount of checks going to come. Yeah. We've got this four cut. We've got another one behind it. Start another zero on the side and we do the five together. Push up. Let's go. Start your gnocchi. The pressure is now on Danny to cook the gnocchi to Claude's high standards. Come on, Danny. We need to take the speed on this. Putting too much fat in it. Look, we need to start again. We're soaking the fat. No, this is no good. This is not crispy. This. We need to get them crispy. For sure. Two by two, they will go very fast. You see the difference? You are thinking too much about it. It should be natural. Don't stress. Look at this. Yeah, they, they look like they are talking to us. Touch them. Touch the difference. Touch this one. Take your time. Feel happy. Let's go. Just make sure we've got the right balance on the plate. There we go. That's table 15, please. Yeah. Good soul. All right, nice, nice job. Good, Danny. Yeah. Very good. Danny was a bit shaky on the beginning, thinking too much. Maybe because he's in here and thinking about two Michelin star restaurant and whatever it is, and he put some pressure on it. But he shouldn't. It should be natural. Cooking is natural. We should don't have to force ourselves to do it. And he can do it. It's, it's hard not to think too much when you're somewhere that you're not used to being. Um, it just automatically happens, I suppose. The restaurant is full and all the orders are in. A three-hour lunch service in a Michelin-starred kitchen is relentless, but the end is in sight. Jonathan, this is our last crab of the lunch, I think. Oui. I'm going to make you put the, the sorbet on it. We do one, you do the other one. Please. Allez, go. You ready? Yeah. OK. So we need a nice, clean canal. Bang on in the middle of the plate. You see? Just go in, get it out. No, too big. That's it. You got it. Put it in the middle of the plate. Stop shaking. Why are you shaking? You done that before. I'm trying to shake it off. Alright, go. Good man. This is table 11. That's your last cup. Fantastic. Thank you. Danny, it's your last two plates. Okay? Be natural, just enjoy it. Don't uh, think too much about it. Just do it. Okay? Voila, that's it. Allez, start dressing. That's it. This is table two. This is your last cut. Thank you very much. Great job. 
yeah, it's very humbling to come somewhere like this and work. Very humbling. It's food that I want to be cooking, but it's also I'll take me out of my comfort zone. There's no practice, there's nothing. You have to produce it there and then. It has to be good enough, otherwise people work for food. We ordered the cod dish. I thought it was really different, but really good. Fantastic, really good, perfectly seasoned, cooked beautifully, exactly on point, couldn't ask for better. The flavour was, was good, it was just right, it's been a really good experience. We ordered the crab dish, it was excellent, very fresh, presented very professionally, very cleanly, and with the almond to finish, which gave it a, a creaminess. It was excellent. Yeah. It was good. It's a good contrast. It was very pretty. I would definitely order it again if it came up on the menu and I was in the mood for crab. Okay, we've well done a good job. Very proud. Thank you very much. Okay, great service. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank it you. It was good. Good speed towards the end. Fantastic. Good lunch. Two good guys, actually. One stressed a bit more than the other, but uh, both can cook. Danny, an interesting character, very gentle guy. I thought he was stressing too much about it. And it's a shame because the guy can cook. Just to see the amount of effort that goes into such simple dishes, it turns out that simple dishes aren't simple in the slightest. You have to think very differently. The mission of the Jonathan today on the lunch was a busy starter. We had a few moments of, uh, we have to say, Jonathan, just slow down a bit, look at what you're doing, think about your testing. But overall, he's been doing a good job. I was a little bit shaky, I didn't know exactly how to plate it nicely, but then by the time I was on my fourth one and doing six at once, I could, nice and quick. Yeah, I got bad back now. But that's, that's the Michelin star crouch kind of thing. Like, you, have, you have to do that if you work a Michelin star restaurant. Lunch service may be over, but Danny and Jonathan have one final chance to impress Claude. They will be cooking one of his signature dishes. Roast squab pigeon breast and leg with burnt tomato puree, confit carrot and a carrot salad, syrup confit of kumquat and a mint coriander and chili sauce. It's very special. It's a dish we used to do in Ladlow. It's been going on with me for over 10 years now. It's been moving with the time, but always the same flavor. It's a dish where I bring me memory when I used to work in the south of France, the burnt tomato puree. When I've been traveling in Marrakesh, you get this flavor, the kumquat, the cumin, all these little flavors. And uh, yeah, very special to me. It's a flavor we use a lot in this kitchen. The risk of this dish is, is very simple. You burn too much the tomato, you got too much bitterness, the pigeon undercooked, not seasoning properly, the way they put the spices. The important is the balance. And this is what I will be looking for. It's a dish I would not like to see as a car crash on the plate, you know. It's always painful when you see a sample dish being destroyed. Hopefully they will understand the, the way we work after the service. And they will realize, okay, that's the way it should be done. Obviously cooking and resting the pigeon properly so it doesn't bleed all over the plate is vital. And then getting this burnt tomato puree right, so it's not just tomato puree, you actually get the bitterness from the burning. I hope to show the chef that I can cook one of his dishes and cook all the components nicely, so technically everything's sound. It's not uh, brilliant. It's, uh, it's quite nerve-wracking, to be honest. I hope I can impress him at least with my, um, my cooking skills. A little bit anxious, 
Um, obviously, it's a signature dish. He knows the dish inside out. If anything's wrong, he's going to pick up on it straight away. So. Good looking plate. Yeah, nice, nice and light. Just how I like it. Look, it's a bit pushy on the garlic, but be French is something I, I don't mind. Good balance, a bit more tomato. The tomato will be maybe, for my taste, a bit more burn. The seasoning is bang on. I mean, the meat is a bit, a bit of a cook for me, but I like it a bit more rare. But you have half an hour, you got time to rest. But I know people will eat it like this. Yeah. It could be a plate of food I will serve in my restaurant. But after, I will push a bit more on the, yeah. on the main flavor. Yeah. But at the end, I will be very happy to put this on the menu. How did it go? It's hard for it to feel natural when you're cooking your food. To try and recreate someone else's dish and someone else's style, it, I, I don't feel natural doing it. Uh, I love that. I love this. You can be proud of this. Thanks, chef. Good luck with the rest. Cheers. Maybe see you next time. <laughs> Cheers. See you. Bye-bye. with how it went. Um, I knew what he was going to say about the tomato. I knew it wasn't burnt enough. I did it wrong to start with and there was, there was no going back. Sitting down next to Claude and serving him his own signature dish is not easy. and it, It's not something that's brilliant to do, but it, it's great to get that feedback from him at the same time. For me, it's a bit messy. The pie is a bit messy. The pigeon is, is a bit too cooked for me. I mean, way, way too cooked for me. But the seasoning is good. The use of the meat and coriander and the chili. Nice use, a bit of garlic, not too much. Actually, the juice got good flavor. On the confit of kumquat, you took a lot of it off. I mean, you use just the skin. The inside of it, the pulp, is actually really interesting to it mm -hmm. because you get some bitterness, but some sweetness. With the syrup, the sugar syrup, you could okay, give you a really nice balance and it brings a lot of freshness back. I will make it a bit more tidy. For me, it's a bit too confusing, you know? When I like saying individual ingredient, but it's a good dish. As long as you don't know, yeah, you can be part of what you've done, you know, in 30 minutes. Have you enjoyed your moment with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah really enjoyed it. Learned a lot, um, seen a lot. So yeah, lots to take away from it. You were good. But I'll come back to see us in any time. Yeah, I will do. Very soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, it's really cool. It's not every day you cook for a two-star chef. It's not as if I've got him at home waiting for dinner every night. Chef seemed to not enjoy some parts, but then, yeah, he's overall he seems happy that I understood the dish. Today, for me, the best dish would be maybe Danny. A bit more my style, you know, a bit more a clean plate. A yeah, pigeon a bit less cooked. Both of them was overcooked. The one of Jonathan was a bit more. But overall, two good dishes, you know. They both done a great job. They can be very proud of what they've done. And it's ridiculous just to be able to walk in and be able to cook with Claude, work so closely alongside him. Things like that usually take years of working in the kitchen to be able to work so closely with them. To be able to do that in one day is absolutely fantastic, it's unbelievable. I've loved every minute of it, no matter how hard and difficult it's been. It's all been a great experience. Chef said I can be proud of myself, so I am proud of myself. close now. To get to the final, it's just like it's within reach and distance. I'm just going to go out guns blazing. 
And if it works, then I'm in the final. Then if it doesn't, I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, today's a massive day, but I think I can be Jonathan. I've seen enough to know that he can cook and that I do need to be on my toes, yeah. Chefs, welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. This is for a place in the finals. We're expecting some really good cooking today and a good battle in the kitchen. An hour and 45 minutes, two amazing plates. Show me what it's going to take to put you through to finals week. Let's go. Jonathan, for me, is a chef that always pushes the boundaries, has a bit of a scientific approach to his food, which is wonderful. He's made some really quirky dishes for us, but it's been a bit hit and miss. He just needs to learn to stop at certain things, not overthink his dishes and try too hard. What I want Jonathan to do is cooked with some love and some understanding. And stop trying to show us something that we've never seen before. I am proud of what I've done, doing things a bit differently, and that is quite often not well received. I'm not putting stuff on just for the sake of it. This is for a place in the finals. So I'm not gonna hold back and play it safe. Give me an hour and three quarters, then I'm just gonna rock out. Jonathan, how are you? I'm good. So happy to be here. I get to show you my own food again. I'm just going to show you today that I've still got the creativity side and everything like that, but I've also drawn it back so it's actually a plate of food. It's still interesting. It's going to be hopefully things you haven't tried together before or something different. That's what I'm doing. How was your time with Claude Bosey? It was really exciting to meet him and then learn from him, get told off by him. It's all great. It's really, really cool. What's the inspiration that, that Claude's had upon you on, on your dishes here today? It's about the balance of flavour. That's the, the one thing he said in his thick French accent all day, balance of flavour. If it's not right, then the dish is ruined. So tell us, what are these two dishes? So the main course is barbecue quail with pineapple, baby German, exo sauce. This one works. This is cool. Please tell me you've tried it. Oh, yes, yes, I've cooked this. I've cooked this before. And dessert? Buttermilk with sweet corn and tarragon. Buttermilk what? Uh, buttermilk pudding, such as panna cotta, sweet corn donuts, which I'm pretty sure I invented, and then tarragon syrup and a tarragon sherbet as well. So you've invented the sweet corn donut just for us today? Well, no, I made a sweet corn fritter and it was rubbish when I did it in the pan, but then I dropped some into the deep fat fryer and they look wicked, so... So these two dishes, you, you, you find you've got that in it, you've tested them, you've eaten them yourself? Yeah, yeah, the pudding I've done extensively because it is something I've never heard of before done together. You're doing something you've never heard of before? I've heard of each part, but then I thought it makes sense to put them together. <laughs> but I, I have tried it on as many people as possible, uh, oh, and they all said it tasted awesome, and some of the people didn't even like me. So, you, 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 uh, you're brave. I'm not going to stick to the, uh, what you expect me to do. I'm going to show you that I am actually worthwhile. I've been dreaming about this now. For, uh, I haven't slept properly because I'm, just, I'm thinking about the next bit, the next bit. What happens when I win? What happens when you win? Yeah. Okay. I hope it's not just a dream. Jonathan has come back after his time of Claude Bossy with this big smile on his face and his food sounds as crazy as ever. Jonathan's doing a barbecue quail. He's going to be taking the legs off the bird. He's going to be putting them through a barbecue marinade, putting them on sous vide and cooking them in the water bath and then roasting them in the pan. Jonathan's serving the quail with pineapple two ways, roasted and the pineapple puree. Never have I thought of having quail with lots of pineapple. He's also serving it with an exo sauce and a braised baby gem. He's making his own exo sauce, which is normally associated with a lot of Asian cooking. 
So he's using dehydrated scallops and shrimps. Very intensive and strong flavors. My main concern is that quail. Are we going to taste any of it? This is an original dish. This is a daring dish. He's got guts, Jonathan. He comes to the table and has a go. We put him here, Monica. We believe in him. Let's just hope he can deliver today. Dessert, Jonathan is making us a buttermilk panna cotta and he's trademarked a sweet corn donut to go with it. I don't believe I've had a sweet corn ice cream as a dessert. I hope this works, I really do. I've had sweet corn ice cream before. It's very, very interesting. It's caramelizing the sweet corn, almost like a popcorn butternut flavor to it. And he's gonna be turning that into his ice cream. It can work really, really well, but I hope it's a good recipe. And I really hope he knows what he's doing with that ice cream. He's serving it with a sweet corn donut, tarragon puree, and a tarragon sherbet. It sounds really, really interesting. Jonathan could give us two amazing plates of food. It could also be a car crash. If I pull it off, then I'm awesome in that. And if I don't, they'll be like, oh, he's gone too far this time. Hopefully it'll blow the socks off and they'll be like, oh yeah, he is the best. Chefs, you've had 45 minutes, you've got one hour left. I'm too chilled, this is no good. I need to do more. Danny, a very controlled chef, very precise. Danny's cooked some fantastic food through the competition. Danny just needs to let go a little bit, I think. He's quite tense character. Today, I'm expecting great things from him because when Danny's cooking his food, it's his best. That place to the final is, is really close now. It's literally a case of cooking two dishes that the judges enjoy more than the other guy's two dishes, which is hopefully what's going to happen. Danny. Chef. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How would you stay with Claude? Um, I like his whole ethos on food, the way that it's all about the balance. So it's the thought process that you're getting out of it, the way yeah. he's thinking, the taste. It was just normal flavours that work well, taken to an extreme. So I suppose at the end of the day, the experience is less is more. Yeah. To be fair. Definitely. Good. What are you cooking today? For the main course, I'm doing Dexter beef, truffle and onion. The Dexter beef is just cooked at 45 degrees, pan roasting, so it stays nice and pink. We're going to do that with a Yukon Gold mash, potatoes just in the oven. And why are you cooking them in the oven? I'm cooking them in the oven just to prevent all the uh, starch coming out in the water. I find I get a nice cleaner mash. We're going to serve that with some caramelised onion puree, some comfy shallot petals. Are you going to be serving a sauce with beef? Yeah, it's just going to come with a little Madeira jus. What about the dessert, Danny? I'm doing a raspberry white chocolate and bee pollen popsicle. Serving that with raspberry jelly, uh, some fresh raspberries and some honeycomb. So the popsicle is obviously just a frozen semi-fredo. We're going to dip that in some white chocolate and cocoa butter that'll be in the shape of a standard ice cream that you'd buy in the shop. <laughs> So it's a little bit of fun, but it's also a serious dessert. It's technical to make. It's, things have to be the correct temperature. Still got to be memorable, though, doesn't it? I think it will. The flavour and the presentation should look, look pretty cool. How do you feel about coming up against Jonathan? At the end of the day, I'm just concentrating on my food, making my food taste nice. If it tastes better than his, winner. Job done. <laughs> cool, man. Off you go. Danny's come to the kitchen today focused. He knows exactly what he's doing. I love the sound of his menu, it sounds great. Danny's using Dexter beef, he's taking the fillet, cooking it in the water bath, and then he's gonna finish it off in the pan for that little bit of roastedness that we love on our beef. He's doing a baked potato, and he's going to be scooping the potato out of the skin, and then turning that into a puree and finishing that with truffle. The potato's cooked in the skin. It allows the potato to stay nice and dry. You can add more milk, more cream, more butter. You're gonna get a beautiful, rich pom puree. He's gonna be adding truffle oil and grated black truffle into that potato puree. Too much truffle oil in a pom puree will overpower the dish and take over the flavor of everything that's on that plate. 
he's got some caramelized onions, a puree and pickled baby onions. And he's serving it with a, a Madeira jus. For me, the perfect onion puree is those onions are gonna be cooked down gently to the point where they're caramelizing, not burnt, and then blitzed to a wonderful, smooth, silky texture. I love the sounds of this dish. Done perfectly and in the right hands, it could be a wonderful beef dish. Danny's putting a fun element to his dessert. He's making us a raspberry white chocolate popsicle. Danny is making popsicle not like an ice cream as we know it, but more like a semi-freddo. So he's got a sabillon whisked up, he's got some cream in there and he's folded through it and he's setting it in the freezer. Once it's set, dip it in some cocoa butter. He's got to get the right thickness. It's not nice to eat too much cocoa butter. I love the sound of this dessert with the honeycomb and the semi-freddo and the bee pollen. As long as there's not too much bee pollen on the plate, it's an unusual type of flavor. You don't want too much of it. Danny's also making honeycomb. He needs to get that poured onto a tray and cool down as fast as possible. If he doesn't, it will continue cooking and it will taste really bitter. But I love the sound of this dish. I like the fact he's bringing a bit of fun to his plate today. Today really matters to me. I've worked hard on my dishes. I've worked hard to get here. I really want that place in the final. It's just a case of getting there and being worthy of getting there. You have just five minutes left now. Everything should be coming together, guys. You now have just three minutes left. Chefs, you've got 60 seconds left. Jonathan, you've got to get it on the plate. Yeah. That's it. Stop cooking. Jonathan. Back off. <laughs> I've got it all on the plate, bro. Jonathan's mane is marinated quail breast and a battered quail leg with pineapple puree, roast pineapple, a grapefruit and pomegranate seed dressing, braised lettuce, and an XO sauce. Presentation, it's a posh plated barbecue plate, is what I would say. <laughs> You've really pushed yourself to the limit here today, Jonathan, and this is one of your better dressed plates of food. Jonathan, the breast of the, the quail with the barbecue sauce on there is just on borderline of being overcooked. I like the hint of the, of the barbecue sauce. It's not as strong as I thought it would be. I love the idea of the, of the lollipop that you've made with the leg. I think you need to get more colour, lovely and golden on, on there. With the pineapple puree on the bottom, that's really strong. Though it's lovely, I think it's just too much for, for the amount of the breast meat that, that's on here. There are so much flavours that's vying for attention, I find, when you eat this. You know, you've got the very strong shrimp exo sauce coming through and then the very sharp pineapple as well. And then I'm crunching down a piece of, of pomegranate. There's lots that I do like on here, but there's just so many intense flavours. I love the sauce. It's got a big flavour, quite a lot of heat in the background. You can taste the, the dried shellfish going through it. So I wish there was more of that on the plate than the actual pineapple itself. I think it's the pineapple that's throwing this dish a little bit. And then you've got, which is the weirdest thing of all, is braised lettuce. Where does that fit into this dish? This is a plate of food that's been so overthought, it doesn't have any identity. For his dessert, Jonathan has made a buttermilk panna cotta with a sweet corn ice cream tower cut into it. It's topped with a tarragon syrup 
and tarragon sherbet. He served it with a side of sweet corn and tarragon donuts. What is this? It's donut batter, but with sweet corn, tarragon, um, milk, flour. It's a sweet corn donut. Right. Not the best looking dessert, Jonathan. In fact, it's quite tatty, a bit rough around the edges. I'm not really tasting sweet corn in the ice cream. Sweetness of the corn or the corn flavour itself or popcorn. The panna cotta is not as delicate and as soft as it should be. I'm not getting the tarragon or the sweet corn in your donut and it doesn't look like a donut as a shape. I like the green that you have on the plate, but it's, it's not a neat plate. It's not a nice looking dessert. I like the idea of the donut or the batter, but unfortunately, because it is a batter, you know, it, it's soaked up quite a bit of oil in there. A donut is actually a mix, it's a dough. It's not a donut. I do like panna cotta with buttermilk, but I think this is a bit on the dense side. Um, I was really hoping to really get some of that tarragon through it, and you've not put enough of that wonderful syrup, which I think would have brought another flavour element to, to your dessert. Buttermilk panna cotta with sweet corn ice cream and a donut with sweet corn and tarragon. I love the sound of those combinations, and you've got the makings of a really good dessert there. And I just feel slightly let down by your execution of this dish. I don't have regrets. I could have chosen things that I knew worked already and things like that, but that's not the reason I'm here or what I like doing. So I'm happy with what I chose. By the sounds of it, I can't cook very well, but I've got good ideas. Danny's main is sous vide and pan roasted Dexter beef truffle pomme puree topped with a bone marrow beignet, onion puree, pickled and confit shallots, and sautéed blue mushrooms. Finish with pancetta, truffles, and a Madeira sauce. That is a great looking plate of food, but I expect nothing less from you. You know, it's just, Amazing, as such a big guy like you can be so delicate when dressing the plates. You've got a very feminine touch. <laughs> <laughs> I love the colour of this dish. The beef is not bleeding on the plate at all. The sauce has got a stunning shine and glaze to it. You've not overdone the pom puree. The dish looks wonderful, it really does. The cooking of the beef is delicious. The pom puree has a beautiful little hint of truffle oil in the background there. That was the bit I was waiting to see how much you were going to put in there. Too much truffle oil in that pom puree and you would have killed that dish completely dead. And the powerful, beautiful, creamy texture that you've created by cooking it in the oven is fantastic. So much better than when you boil potatoes for a puree. You've got it absolutely right. I could just devour this whole dish. It is divine. Everything has been about the balance. It's what we talked about earlier. And I really believe you've accomplished that on this dish. The sauce, dare I say, is very unctuous. The <coughs> shine on that. You've got the sweetness of the Madeira that, that comes through it. The marrow, a little bit of marrow on the side, which is quite fatty. I like that. But what cuts through that is the sharpness of the little pickled shallots. Such a clever dish, and every mouthful that you take on here, I find, has just come together harmoniously. Well done, Danny. For his dessert, Danny is serving a raspberry and white chocolate popsicle dipped in cocoa butter and finished with bee pollen. Served with fresh raspberries, raspberry jelly, and a raspberry puree and honeycomb. Your raspberry and chocolate ice cream is really fun to eat. I love the idea of your semifreddo in a popsicle. I think you've got just the right amount of cocoa butter coating that so you can sort of taste the semifreddo underneath. Raspberries is what I get mostly in there and it's very sharp and refreshing, a bit of sweetness in there. The raspberries, the fresh raspberries add a bit of freshness to it. 
I like the jelly and puree that you've got on here. Love the plate, the colour, um, and the colours of the red raspberries and, and the semi freddo on the stick comes out really well. Overall, Danny, I really like this idea, and there's a few areas here that I think you've slightly missed on the execution. The honeycomb is a little bit on the bitter side for me, and it is burning the back of my throat. The bitterness is just there. I also think that the semi freddo could be a little bit on the bigger side. It could be a larger ice cream. I think the concept outweighs the dish itself, personally. I'm happy with how I cooked the food. I'm happy with both dishes. I hope I've done enough, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself and start thinking I'm through before I am. Monica and I have got a discussion to have, and we have to make a decision of who's leaving the competition. And we'll call you back in a bit. These two chefs couldn't be any more different. Danny always controlled, knows exactly what he wants to do. Jonathan, what you have to love is enthusiasm. He's got a huge amount going on in his head. He really pushed himself to the limit today. Jonathan put some interesting plates together and I think Jonathan was just a little bit confused. The quail with the barbecue marinade idea for me, had that amazing exo sauce, which was the star of his dish. I really liked his exo sauce. Great flavour, packed a punch. You just wanted more of it on the plate. There was just so many flavours vying for attention. The quail in the barbecue sauce, uh, some grilled pineapple, pomegranate with some grapefruit. Wow! I thought if Jonathan could have just taken a couple of elements out of that main course, he would have had a good dish there. At the end of tasting Jonathan's dish, my brain was all over the place. I was a little bit confused. I was going in all different directions. It was such a shame because it was really nice to see fresh ideas coming out of the kitchen and Jonathan's full of them. The buttermilk panna cotta with the tarragon syrup. For me, it just looked messy. Jonathan sold this dish to me and I was so looking forward to it, but I felt a little bit let down on the execution. The ice cream, you did not get the flavor of the sweet corn coming through. The buttermilk was a little bit on the heavy side for me, the panna cotta. I was disappointed that we didn't actually get donuts, but just very oily fritters. I had this picture of the donut with the sweet corn going through it, deep fried, and then just rolled in some nice sugar. It was not a donut. I love Jonathan's ideas. Well, they're exciting, they're enthusiastic. He just needs to think about them a little bit more. I do hope they give me another shot, because I think I'm like, so close to like coming up with a like, perfect dish, something no one's seen before. If I can just practice the execution, get it spot on, then, yeah, I think I'll be mega. Danny, he is one focused chef, especially when he's cooking in his comfort zone, and that's when Danny cooks his own food. His main course for me, that beef was wonderfully cooked. It was red throughout. That mashed potato with just hints of truffle coming through it. It wasn't overpowered at all. What a great plate of food. The balance, I thought he got it spot on. Danny today took a, a very classical style dish with a classical cookery and raised it to new levels. The attention to detail in the cooking of the beef on the sous vide bag and then finishing it in the pan, the classical making of a sauce, but the beautiful sheen and shine that he put on the top. I thought it was great cookery. Classical cookery brought into the modern world is a very, very clever and difficult thing to do. Danny's dessert, or his take on, on a dessert, was, was such a, a fun element for me. His raspberry ice lolly on a stick with the fresh raspberries for a bit of puree. He had a bit of jelly on there. I thought it was a great dessert because it was fun. The honeycomb was just over and you could taste the bitterness on there. Danny would probably kick himself for it that he's put those on the plate. The one thing I didn't want on my palate at the end of that dish was the flavour of bitter honeycomb. I wanted the flavour of raspberry ice cream. To be left in the final five would just, it'd be amazing. If I do go through, I think there's a couple more things I can do to impress them. Less gimmicky desserts, maybe. Monica, who do we take through?
Chefs, there's been a lot of ups and downs today, but we've really enjoyed having both of you in the kitchen. You both came back quite enthused, and it's great to see the enthusiasm here in the kitchen. Unfortunately, only one of you will be going through. The chef that is going through to finals week is... Danny. Jonathan, thank you very much. Of course, it's disappointing to go out. I've loved every second of it. Yeah, I'm happy. I'll just keep on trucking, doing what I do. Really happy for you, Danny. Yeah, well yeah. done. You've done a great job to be here. Yeah, it does feel good to be a finalist. Um, I don't smile much. I'm a serious guy, I can't help it. I think there'll be a big smile if I get to the final three. Next time, the last two semi-finalists battle to stay in the competition. 25-year-old Ollie and 33-year-old Darren will be going head-to-head -head under the gaze of restaurant pioneer, Anthony Dimitri. Relax, you're trembling, you're shaking like a leaf. They will then compete to impress Marcus and Monica with their own dishes. Their food has got to be faultless. But only one of them can win a coveted place in the finals. I want to see them running right till the end. <laughs> <laughs>